similar to Minister Fries. Um, you know, we just started the Phase 3 campaign, and I told my husband, I said, we have to do this. I didn't know how we were going to do it, but I knew that we needed to sow into the kingdom of God for whatever he was trying to do in order to get what we needed to get for our house. So, Pastor, I want to say, I don't remember when, but he spoke to me, I know it was the end of last year in regards to a shift in my career. So I was like, okay, I hear you guys. So I started applying for jobs and doing interviews and I was qualified. In some situations I was overqualified and I didn't get the job. And I couldn't for the life of me figure out why. It's like, okay, well, you know, the prophet said that there's gonna be a shift in my career. He said the door was opening, but where is it? So some months passed and then phase three comes and my husband and I said, hey, I was at home doing online service. He was in service, and I said, make sure you do our pledge. And I was probably getting on his nerves because I was texting him during service, like, hey, did you do it? Did you submit it? We have to do this. Did you do it? He's like, yes, I did it. I did it. So I want to say within a week of that, I got a call for an interview. And then the next week, I got a call being offered the job. And then after that, they called me, and they let me know, hey, so we're going to offer you X amount of dollars. It's $12,000 more a year than I make now. Man. Wow. Glory. Hallelujah. Solely, so I believe it's only for God's glory, of course. We didn't have the seed for our phase three, but we knew we were going to do it. And I believe because we had our faith and our hearts in the right place, God provided that seed. And I believe it's Second Corinthians 9.10 where it says that he provides seed for the sower. So... If you haven't taken your pledge yet, or if you're unsure of how you're going to do it, set your faith, set your expectation, take the pledge, and put it in God's hands.
Lord, we thank you for you are good. You are great. You are mighty. No matter the circumstance, no matter what things look like, you are good and you are still in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Good evening, Abundant Life. Good evening, family. And good evening to those that are online. We welcome you. We welcome you. Tonight is going to be an excellent time in the Lord. Hallelujah. If you would just allow me to read uh, from Luke verses 1 in verse 45, it talks about Elizabeth and Mary and how Mary was coming to Elizabeth when Elizabeth was carrying John. And verse 45 says, And blessed is she that believed, or he, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told from the Lord. I'm going to read it one more time. And blessed is she or he that believe for there shall be a performance of those things which were told of them from the lord hallelujah so if there are things that you are waiting on the lord to do the word says blessed are you that shall believe for there shall be a performance so father on tonight we tell you that we believe in you we believe in you and we are trusting in you for all things are possible and that is also in that chapter all things are possible to them that believe so lord if there is anything that is on the hearts and the minds of your people tonight i thank you that they will give it to you that they will cast their cares upon you for you can carry it all your yoke is easy and your burden is light Lord, let us just get and stay in your presence and watch the manifestations of the Lord take place because we believe in you, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. If you're trusting in God tonight, can you just wave your hand? And if you're able, will you just stand and worship together? Can we worship the Lord together? You. You're 
in control of my life. You're in control of my family. You're in control of my child. Yes, Lord. Oh, I trust in God. I trust in God. In my Savior. My Savior.
if you're feeling unloved. He is wrapping his loving arms around you. And he's telling you, I've never left. I've always been there. All I need is your trust in me. I love you, my child. It doesn't matter what you did. Just come back to me. My arms are always open, waiting here for you. I love you so much. I love you so much. Oh, help me say, say.
Tell yourself I'm loved by the Lord. This is who I, this is who I Celebration before you sit. Be seated in the presence of God. Thank you, praise it. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. Good evening, Abundant Life Church. Hey, family, friends, and those of you that are joining us on the social media, welcome, welcome, welcome. I want to uh, go ahead and get the announcements out of the way and let you know some some wonderful things that, that are going to happen. Uh, this Sunday is our Resurrection Sunday, and Apostle Kirkpatrick will be ministering a powerful word this Sunday, this coming Sunday. And remember, we have one service, a combined service, which starts at 10 o'clock a.m. Please bring the sick, and we use this word afflicted, uh, those that are in wheelchairs that are believing God for a supernatural miracle for God to minister to them through the through the hands and the anointed word of Apostle Kirkpatrick. We just believe that they will they will they will not come they will come in one way and leave another. What's the other way? Healed, made whole, set free. Hallelujah. So again, we we encourage you to come 10 o'clock a.m. one combined service and we're going to have a an amazing lineup we're going to have a celebration of uh from the ministry the praise team the dance ministry and also our children's ministry so again we'll see you sunday at what time 10 o'clock hallelujah i want us to go ahead and just pray in the spirit for a moment come on to those of you that pray that uh, speak in tongues. Let's pray for, for a few moments. Can you play something song for me? Let's 
Praise team did a powerful job, but I think it's time to transition. Can you turn it down just a little bit for me? Latora, turn it down just a little bit. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La coche qui est au côté que ça fera. La manda koshkete de nanto koshkete la koshike asoko la koshike shike de manda asoko hallelujah amen and amen hallelujah hallelujah tonight i have the the pleasure of uh teaching the word this evening i'm just going to share uh nothing deep i'm just going to share the word of god with you on some insight that god has given me through uh the word that Apostle Kirkpatrick has brought and is bringing. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. For those that you came, that came Sunday, Apostle Kirkpatrick taught a powerful word, is teaching a powerful word on uh, the power of God's word. The power of God's word. I would encourage that you, if you haven't uh, seen the service, go online and watch the service and go buy the CD so you can have it and pop it in there and listen to it any time that you need to hear the word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Let me pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit that I am able to do what I do, which, what the assignment is for me tonight. And we thank you, Father, right now in the name of Jesus for a greater anointing upon me, greater anointing upon our ears to hear what the spirit of the Lord is saying in the name of Jesus. We thank you that we'll not just be hearers of the word, but we'll be doers as well. And we give you glory. We give you honor and praise. Amen. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Just a just want to talk to you about a revelation that the God, the Lord gave, gave me. One of the many, one of the, I told you about the uh, powerful teaching, the, the, the power of God's word. And when I heard the word, one of the, one of many statements that Apostle Kirkpatrick made resonated in my spirit. Holly, I'm going to tell you what one of the particular things that resonated in my spirit. I had to go work that thing out. What do you mean by work it? I had to go search that thing out and just ponder and mutter and meditate on it till I got some uh, clarity of what God was saying. I'm going to par paraphrase. I'm going to paraphrase what Apostle said. Apostle Kirkpatrick declared how God's word is a living, breathing pulsating word that has the power to create that thing hit my spirit i said oh my god i'm gonna say it again he said <laughs> he declared how god's word is a living i'm gonna let that sink in for a moment i know we already know that but i want you to hear that god's word is a living breathing pulsating word that has the power to create. Hallelujah. For my first, I'm going to go ahead and give you my, my, my title tonight. It's God, Gideon's Transformation. Gideon's Transformation. Hallelujah. Just a sharing. I'm just sharing. Gideon's Transformation, and this is what I got. He, he mentioned Gideon throughout some of the teaching and that that, again, that was something else that resonated, and I was just saying, okay, I'm going to revisit that and see what, what happened with Gideon. Let, let, let's, let's, let me revisit and see what happened with Gideon. 
Um, the first scripture I'm going to read is, is, is in 2 Corinthians 3 and 18. 2 Corinthians 3 and 18 in the ESV version. It may be a little different, but it's, it's, it's the same word. It says, and we all, and we all with unveiled face, beholding the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into the same image from one degree of glory to another. For this comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. Hallelujah. Transform. Gideon's transformation. And uh, I want to read uh, John 1 and 1 of the Amplified Bible. And I'm going somewhere with these scriptures in a moment. In the beginning, before all time, was the word Christ, and the word was with God, and the word was God himself. Remember that scripture. Pay attention to that scripture. I want to read it again. In the, the, in the beginning, before all time, was the word who was Christ and the word was with God and the word was God himself and the word was God himself one more scripture Isaiah and Isaiah 43 and 19 from the Amplified Bible it says behold I am doing a new thing now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm going to read that again. Hallelujah. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. I'm going to use this scripture in the context of how, uh, how God demonstrates to Gideon that he should never count God out in using him to do the miraculous in the lives of his people to deliver them from the hands of their enemy. I'm going to use it in that context. And we will see how Gideon had a supernatural encounter with the word God that transformed his life forever. Remember that I, that I told you John 1 and 1 to be part of that? And the word was God himself. And the word was God himself. Hallelujah. God, Gideon had a supernatural a natural encounter with the word God that transformed his life forever. Now we're going to look at some examples of what happened to Gideon uh, in, in Judges chapter 6 and 8. But let me tell you first of all who Gideon is. I know you, you already know but I'm just going to share with who Gideon is. Uh, Gideon's name is translated in, in, as hewer or, or faller, feller which means to cut down but it was interesting. In the Hebrew word, it means get on, which means warrior. I thought that was interesting. We know that Gideon was a judge. Gideon was appointed a judge from God uh, to rescue uh, Israel, his people, from uh, the Midianites. He was a leader with insight. He had the wisdom to see issues, the vision to see what lied ahead. God gave him insight into the weak hearts of the Midianites. Gideon led with confidence. And the men were willing to follow him because of this. He walked in such confidence of being that leader, that soldier, that the men was willing to follow him. Hallelujah. I can, I, I can identify with that. I, you already know, military, 32 years. Them boys, the men and women, and where we went, we went together. And I was right there with them. So I know how this is. They will follow if you have confidence in what you're doing. Hallelujah. So the backdrop, let me give you a backdrop about Gideon. Gideon was in, here's the situation. Oh, oh let me, oh, I, I just, I just saw something. Here's the situation here. He had all this confidence in his ability as a leader. But 
because he could see, he was, a, I'm going to say, a seer. He saw all of the despair of, the, of God's people and what was happening. Guess what? But Gideon was in the despair because uh, he felt he felt insignificant. He, his people felt insignificant, and it disturbed him. It disturbed him so deeply. It says we find Gideon bent over in the pit to conceal his uh, meager produce from the enemy. Now we're gonna tell you about that later. Basically, he was in a hole somewhere. He was in a hole. I'm gonna read it to you later. He was in a well or in a, a place hiding away, hiding away and pining away because of the despair of the people. And I thought it was some, it's just interesting. So let's go to Judges 6, verses 11 and 16. So while he was in despair, oh, my God, he was in there hiding. So visualize, uh, okay, this, just visualize getting it somewhere in the room up here. Somewhere in a hole, somewhere hiding because he's so despairing, so just so sad. Because I just, I, I don't understand why God has not delivered us. Why God is allowing these things to happen to us. Sounds familiar. Why is that happening to me? And it, it can cause one to become dis, in despair and lose hope. And lose hope. And lose hope. Hallelujah and lose hope. Hallelujah. I will say this. God, I will say this and lose hope. Uh, I remember a time that that I was deployed and we was in uh, Iraq, way out there, way up there, in the middle of nowhere. And it was a, sp a specific post uh, that uh, it was, you know, highly secure, had a lot of security. And we could just, you know, mill around and do what we do, and and uh, you just do what you do. And I noticed that there was it was a place of darkness. It was just a heavy darkness. And I remember reading the oh, I got in my word then. I had my little Bible, and I <laughs> I was eating that Bible like I was like oh my God. But I remember uh, being in a place of despair. I said, Lord, I don't have anybody to worship with. We don't even have church. We just out here in the middle of nowhere, you on your own. And if, you, if you're going to stand, you're going to stand with God or, hey, I'll fall. But I remember in that, in that moment of disparity, God sent. I was standing. I was standing in line, going in the commissary or something they had set up. And I remember a young, a young man by the name of Sinstack. He turned around. He said, uh, he said, uh, well, I'm going to just say sorry. Sorry for it. He saw my name. He said, uh, are you a believer? I said, sure. Are you saved, sanctified? Yes. He said, I'm having a Bible. I'm having a Bible study in one of our tents down here. And you're more than welcome to come. You know, I was really excited. I'm saying how God brought me out of that despair. And I went to that Bible study, and it was just the two of us. And that sin stag began to pray. and He prayed in the spirit. He said, we're going to pray first. I kid you not, we prayed at least an hour in the spirit. And then I got, I had the nerve, I had the audacity to get, get weary. And the Holy Spirit quickened me. Didn't you ask for this? Didn't you, don't you need this? But I'm just saying this about this, uh, just being able to I understand how you can become this sad or in a mood if you don't see God and, and read the word and pray and all of that. But I will say this and then I'm going to cut that part off. And as you begin to pray in the spirit, I found myself in the midst of a prophet, a true prophet. He began to share with me that God said that you are going, you and your, your company will leave earlier than was planned. As a matter of fact, you'll leave several months before it's time for you to leave. He said, God said he is, you are going to leave. And I said, okay, I believed it. I knew it. Long story short, it happened. It happened. And why did it happen? Because after we got out, it was, ex it was an extended stay, a longer period of time, and it, 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 things started to get heavy. But the point I was making was being despaired. God came to my rescue. He answered my prayer. He met me where I was. 
And that's, we're going to see how he met Gideon where he was. Hallelujah. Verse 11. Okay. Judges 6, verse 11 through 16. And there came an angel. Now remember, he's sitting around pining away. Okay. And there came an angel of the Lord and sat under an oak, which was in Oprah, not Oprah, Oprah, which was in Oprah, that pertained unto Joash and Abba's right. And his son Gideon thrashed wheat by the wine press to hide it from the Gideon of the Midianites. Twelve, and the angel of the Lord appeared unto him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thy, thou mighty man of valor. And Gideon said unto him, O oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then, oh, let me slow down on here. Let me, let me slow down on here. I want to, I want to, I want to uh, show you something here. If you notice, the Lord called Gideon a mighty man of valor. In Romans in 4, 17, it says, Call, God calleth those things which be not as though they were. In Gideon's mind, he was not a man of valor. He was a man of war. He, you know, he could fight. But there's a valor, there's a certain mentality that he did not have as being a man of valor. So God, God called, the Lord called uh, him a mighty man. And he, why, why did he say that? Because he needed to influence him to come to another level of, of his glory so he could accomplish a, a, a miracle, a supernatural miracle for his people. And then let's go back 13. And Gideon said unto him, Gideon, here I go again. Let me tell you what I noticed here. Gideon had the nerve. I'm going to use that expression. Gideon, I saw Gideon had the nerve to have an attitude toward God. He copped an attitude. He, now listen, 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 what he, listen to what he's saying. I'm going to say it like I've, I, saw it, I saw it. And Gideon said unto him, Oh, my Lord, if the Lord be with us, why then did this, this befalls us, befallen us? And where did all his miracles which our father told us, saying, did not the Lord bring us out? He said, he, he said Lord, you said all this, uh, but it's not happening. What's up with that? Well, he had an attitude. He had an attitude with God. You said you was going to bring us from Egypt, out of Egypt, and, and, and you you forsaken us. You said you was going to deliver us from the hands of the Midianites. What's happening? Look at all the things that are happening to us. I don't like this. Okay? Verse 11. I like how the Lord handled him. He said, and the Lord looked upon him and said, go in this thy might. Let me slow that down. The Lord said to him, okay. Okay, let me remind you of something. Go in this, thy might, and thou shalt save Israel from the hand of the Midianites. Have I not sent thee? I'll read that again. He, he, he rebuked him, but he also reminded him. You want out of the situation, do something about it. And for, in order for the miraculous to happen, I want to use you as a vessel so you get up and do something and you go in that might. What might was he talking about? The might that God had placed upon him. He hadn't, he, he hadn't even yet realized that God's anointing was upon him to do the task that was set before him. He didn't realize it. And God had already, when he spoke to him, he got it. He received it. Oh, my God. When he spoke it, he received the empowerment in order to do that. So I like this part right here at the end. He said, have I not sent thee? And, and in another translation, he says, I am. Have I am not sent thee? Immediately, that reminded me of the scripture that says in Exodus 3 and 14, God was saying, I, what he said to Moses, I am that I am. And he spoke that to Gideon. He said, I am. He said, I am that I am. He empowered him at that moment to do what needed to be done. It wasn't by might nor by power, by his spirit, but it was by the spirit of God that he anointed him. And that's what I got from that. I thought that was just amazing that it's not by might nor by power, but it's by your spirit. That it was by the spirit of God that he was able to do what needed to be done. Okay. 
And then he, in verse 15, he, Gideon continued to make excuses. He continued to make an excuse. And he said unto him, oh, my Lord, wherewith shall I save Israel? How am I going to do that? Behold, now he making a, he, he, he's, he's telling the Lord, oh, look at me. He said, behold, look at my family. My family is poor in Manasseh, Manasseh. And I am the least of my father's house. Make an excuse. I, I didn't come from the right, the right side of the tracks. We po, we po people. So how do you expect for me to do something like that when we are just poor and down and out? See how he had that mentality. He couldn't even see himself as a man of valor. Sounds familiar. Sometimes we cannot see. We just can't see how God sees us. And so until we look into the word, the mirror of the word, and it reflects back to us, we don't see what we, how we see ourselves. When we see the word, we see how God sees us. Hallelujah. Glory. And that brings faith into our spirits. It ignites our spirits. Hallelujah. And verse 16, and the Lord said unto him, surely, he going to reassure him. And the Lord said unto him, surely I will be with thee, and thou shalt smite the Midianites as one man. Hmm. thought that was interesting. What did I just get from that? You can be with one individual. You, we as individuals are anointed from God. But when God sends us on a mission or a task, everybody around us benefits because we are anointed. God has appointed us and he sent us out with that anointing. So guess what? Everybody else benefit from it. We'll benefit from that. He said, you're going to do it. You're going to do it. One man. But he saw them as one. One man, one heart. I'm saying here, when we do the things of God and do the tasks and the mission that God has set before us, we are one in the spirit. We are joined as one body. So we are, oh my God, we are one. So God sees it as not individuals. He sees it as Abundant Life Church International. Abundant Life Church International. And he blesses, he anoints, he appoints. He empowers us through the word. Hallelujah. Now I'm going to read some scriptures here. We're going to talk about our, so let's go to uh, in chapter seven. I did already say Proverbs in 23 and 7 in reference to how Gideon saw himself. It says, Proverbs 23 and 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. We heard how he was speaking his heart, how he saw himself. How can this be? I'm from a poor family. You can't send me. I ain't, I ain't worthy. Okay. Let's continue. According to the narrative, Gideon was called upon by God to save the Israelites from the oppression of the Midianites. Gideon initially doubted his ability. We saw that. We heard that. To fulfill God's command. But after receiving signs, he actually fleeced the Lord. Lord, if this is you. Lord, this is you. Show me a sign. If you go and read it for yourself, you'll see how he just, oh, every time he turned around, he said, Lord, this. Lord, if this is you. Lord, because he had no confidence in his own ability. Um, he had no confidence in the, uh, the ability of God. Gideon initially doubted his ability to fulfill God's command, but after receiving signs from God, he rallied an army of 30. We're going to read this. He rallied an army of 32,000 men to fight against the Midianites, the Amalekites, and the other armies of the east. Gideon knew that he could win the battle because he had 32,000 troops. Did y'all hear that? I know you heard it. He knew I can win this battle. He still had that mentality. He didn't realize it's not by might nor by power, but it's by my spirit. It's by God's spirit. He still had that mentality. I can do, we can do this. And to make sure, so God, to make sure that God know what he's talking about, I'm going to take 32,000 men with me, and we're going to make it happen. Okay. Uh, okay, so the story goes on to tell, uh, it goes on to tell you that the Lord saw his pride. He was walking in pride. I can do this. But God said one man, but he didn't get it. I can do this. He walked in pride. He walked in pride and uh Realize that God realized and recognized this, that he said, huh, I got something for you, Gideon. 
we're going to make some changes. We're going to make some changes. So we're going to go ahead and read. Uh, it goes on to tell, tell us that uh, he said, I want you to cut it down to 10,000. It's too big. I want you to cut it down to 10. He said 32,000 men. That's too big. I got something for you. Cut it down for me. And then he went on to give him a series of uh, tests or things to do in order to eliminate those men. And I don't know if it said women, but those soldiers. I think it was just men at that time. Those soldiers from uh, what was going on. Okay, so let's read it. Let's read. Let's go to uh, Judges 7, verses 4 through 7. I promise I'm not going to read the whole book of Judges. I'm not going to read that. But I'm going to read something here to make a point. Uh, Judges 7, verses 4 through 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down to the water. These are the tests that he's doing to eliminate. Bring them down unto the water, and I will try them for those there. I will try them for thee there. And it shall be uh, that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Verse 5, so he brought down the people into the water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, every one that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, he shall, him shall thou set, set by himself likewise, every one that boweth down upon his knees to drink. Sorry. It's a good question. And verse 6 says, And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three were three hundred men's men, but all the rest of the people bowed down their knee to drink water. And the seven, and the Lord said unto Gideon, By the three hundred men that lapped, will I save you and deliver the Midianites into thy hand, and let all the others go, every man unto his place. Now, that was a powerful situation there. God showed him that I, I, I'm going to do this by my spirit. I'm going to do this in my might. I'm going to use you. You're the vessel. You're the instrument. But I am going to anoint you to do it. And Gideon had a, he said, now, wait a minute. 300 men, he had a question about that thing. He still had not quite trusted, totally tr trusted God. Gideon had to be willing to change his mindset of doing things in a way he was conditioned to do and follow the new move of God. God was doing a new thing in Gideon and how he was operating. He was transforming him. He was being transformed right before his own eyes and he doesn't. He didn't even realize it. So God was uh, getting him to a level to walk in a new level of victory, uh, the promise to fulfill the promise that he made. I'm going to use you and those 300 men to deliver you. Hallelujah. What Gideon received from God, now here's that thing I said, remember that said God is the word, word is God. Uh, what Gideon received from God is like how we receive faith after we hear the word of God. And let me explain to you who I, what I got from that when I saw that. Okay, so Romans, of course, Romans 10 and 17 says, so faith, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We access God. We access God's faith through His Word. Okay, some, in a situation, how to do that? We're so destitute and we're so down and out before we come become 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 saved, and we receive a supernatural faith from God in order to make that transition, or from I'm gonna say sinner to saint, for for just to make it easy, from sinner to saint. Now we have received it by faith. We've heard it. And we receive it by faith. And it, now we are born again. So let me, let me explain to you how this correlation is with Gideon, what I saw in this. John 1 and 1 says, in the beginning, again, that's that same scripture. In the beginning, before all, before all time was the word Christ. And the word was with God. And the word was God himself. Now, let me explain to you how that word, that transition happened to Gideon. When Gideon came, when, when God came to Gideon to encourage him, to tell him about 
his divine plan for his people. Gideon was irritated. I said that he was irritated and he challenged God because he was looking at the devastation surrounding his people. And it caused a struggle so deep within him that he initially rebelled, rebelled and wasn't open and wasn't open to hear what God was saying. He wasn't open to hear what God was saying. I've experienced that, and I'm sure I've had some other people in my family experience it. Sometimes we just, we say things, and we say it in a way, and immediately everything shut down. Whoop. I just see, see the mouth moving, wah, 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 I heard nothing. <laughs> and, and trust me, I can be that way. I can be that way. I heard nothing because of our Apostle Kirkpatrick that reminds us, don't be offended. Don't allow offense to come upon you because it will shut you down. He was offended. He was offended out of ignorance. God wanted to do something great with you and with him. And he, he, he was rebellious. He had a rebellious attitude. Uh, he had a rebellious attitude. So let's go. Let's continue to talk about the word was God himself. This is what I learned through reading all this. I think the revelation that I got from this. God was saying to him, oh, here it is. Y'all ready? It is. God was saying to him, as the word God, remember, the word was God himself. As the word God commanded Gideon, it ignited him in a supernatural, it ignited him with a supernatural God kind of faith. Uh oh, he said it and immediately. He received something in his spirit. He received a, God, a supernatural God kind of faith. And Gideon's confidence in God's ability a soared to another level where he could fully trust God, trust the word God, the word God, and whatever he told him. Because of Gideon's obedience to the word God, he was empowered to accomplish, you can go on and read it, miraculous things that brought salvation. Oh, here's that word salvation. Now God, when God spoke to us, we received salvation, we received Christ, we received all the things and the benefits of God to walk in the things of God. Now look at the twist here. He received the word, God word. He received a, an impartation a transformation, and not only did he receive that, he received salvation. What kind of salvation? Salvation for his people. I went, I looked up that salvation, and it says rescue, recovery, redemption, escape, deliverance, deliverance. He received salvation for all his people, and a nation of people were delivered and set free. So you can go ahead and read that for yourself and, and see how God delivered him, delivered them from, uh, they were victorious in all that they did. They were victorious in all they did. Okay, well, Apostle Kirkpatrick is also, you know, we here, we're a faith-based ministry. We, we learn faith, faith, we learn about faith. I'm not going to cover all of that. We learn about faith. What kind of faith should we have? The God kind of faith. Uh, it should be a supernatural faith. In Romans 4 and, and 17 says, God calleth those things which be not as though they were. He calleth those things. Now, I'm going to say this. Now, this we know that in this the context of this scripture, it's talking about, it speaks about Abraham and Sarah with a child. I'm just going to read it. The context of this verse from Romans speaks about how God supernaturally blessed Abraham and Sarah with a child, saying, speaking those things that be not as though they were. Here we go again, a plug in. I just, I guess, just got to download there. Speaking those things that be not as though they were. I have to make reference to the war coming from the war. The Lord revealed to me that you, we already had a son. He revealed to me that you and Sharon are going to have a, a daughter. I saw it. Saw it. I saw her. I could describe what God showed me when that baby came was what God showed me. And I remember, this is the point I'm making here about this. 
how God will reveal supernatural things. He'll call those things as be not as though they were. He calls Shanae into existence. He said, I am going to give you her. And he called those things. And I call those, I call that thing, that girl that was not as though she was already here. And I began to exclaim and I said, Sharon, the Lord showed me. Some of you may have heard the story. We're going to have a baby girl. And I went on to describe her. Sharon, you mind if I share the response? Sharon, she didn't refute it. She said, no, I'm not ready for that. Basically, I don't want to go through that again right now. You all understand that situation. I'm not, I don't want to go through that. I said, God said it. He showed it and it's so. How about, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get off of this. How about we go home to visit my, my mother down in South Carolina? We walk in the door. And my mama says, Sherry, the Lord told me that you were expecting you're going to have a baby girl. He confirmed the word. He confirmed. He, we, but what we did is you put it in your mouth. Apostle said, you, he gives it to you. You put it in your mouth and you speak it in faith. God said it in his soul. So whatever he tells you, speak it in faith and it shall come to pass. So I just thought I'd give you that situation that can remind me of that. And my daughter is sitting here. There she is. She's sitting here. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Now let me continue with, we all know the story. And uh, so Ab Abram was 100 and Sarah was 91 when Isaac was born. And the year uh, before Isaac's birth, when Abram did, still did not have a child by his wife, God told him the child was coming. And he changed Abram's name to Abram Ham and Sarah's name to Sarah. Abram meant, Abram meant high father, but Abraham means to be populous, father of multitudes. And we are a part of that, father of many nations. We are a part of that. So we're going to go on to, uh, you know what, I, something did come to mind in the sense of, I'm going to say this and I'm going to get off of this, mental ascent. Sometimes we can have that mental ascent. Apostle Christ has mentioned that many times, a number of times. Mental, a mental ascent. Mental ascent is when one waits for physical evidence before believing that person agrees with the Bible, but they just don't believe it can happen to them. I'll say it again. Mental ascent. Mental ascent is when one waits for physical evidence before believing that person agrees with the Bible. I agree. The Bible says it. Uh, and they agree with God but just cannot see it happening for them personally. They just, just don't fully receive it. And of, God, of course, God encourages us that we have to release faith. We have to walk by faith. God's faith goes beyond sight. God's faith operates supernaturally. It goes beyond limitations of our natural faith or our natural mind. For God promises, to come, God promises will come to pass in your life. You must act and faith, believe, receive, and speak it. Believe it, speak it, and do it, and move, and act upon it. Hallelujah. I'm going to continue. I'm going to go on ahead here. I'm going to head to Kushkipa and Rokutikish. Like I said, I'm not going to cover all those scriptures about faith. Don't I sound like my dad? I know, man, you're an old dude. you talking about your dad? Yeah, my apostle father. Don't I sound like... I got some more scriptures, but I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> and move forward <laughs> that man of God told you get some word validated with the word validated with the word hallelujah so I'm going to say this uh, God is doing a new thing in us individually and corporately God is doing a new thing in us individually and corporately I know you have seen this shift I know you see the move of God the hand of God is upon us the hand of God is upon us and the hand of God is upon us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Isaiah 43 and 19 from the Amplified Bible, it reads, Behold, I am doing a new thing. Not will. I'm doing it right now. I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not give heed to it? I will make even a way in the, des in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, this is what I want to uh, uh, admonish you all or all of us to do. 
Allow God to do the miraculous in the wilderness places within you that no one knows about. Huh. Mm, he said, I will do this in you. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive and know it? And will you not greet, give heed to it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wilderness, if we look it up, is associated with different images and implications. But this is the wilderness that I'm talking about that's with us, that can be within us. It can be within us. Uh, it, it, it goes on to say that a wilderness is portrayed as a state of chaos. A state of chaos. Whatever chaotic thing that's going on in that wilderness inside of us, God wants to do a new thing and deliver us. We see it. We, we have seen it. He's delivering people from chaos, from the wilderness, from the wilderness places. He said, he said, uh, it goes, talk about great uh, chaos. Let me read it again. The wilderness portrayed as a state of chaos that by God's grace will be transformed into fertile lands. I've had a lot of wildernesses that God transformed into fertile land. And how do we do that? We allow, we, uh, we allow, we yield that, we yield that, that part to God. I don't want nobody to see that. It doesn't matter about what people see. It matters what we yield to God and allow God to remove that wilderness from our spirit, from us. And also I like to say, allow God to send rivers in your desert places. What kind of desert places you're, you're hiding and holding and just can't seem to let go? It says throughout the word of God, water represents the Holy Spirit's ability to refresh us, to quench our spiritual thirst, to cleanse us, to bring forth life wherever he flows. He is the rain of heaven, and he is the living river that flows from within. That's that desert place. Allow him to flow. Allow him to flow. Hallelujah. Glory. I'm even reminded as we flow in the spirit and pray for things that we don't know of in the Holy Spirit, he praying and making an intercession for us. And we find ourselves delivered, from, delivered from something. Like, well, where did that go? <laughs> because we prayed that that river flowed in us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay, I will say this. Faith, we already know faith acts on the word of God before anyone sees anything happening in the natural realm. Sometimes we must participate. I say all the time. I said some. I, say, I believe all the time we must participate and follow God's instructions for the miraculous to manifest in the natural. The year of the miraculous. We need to allow God to work through us in whatever area, however he wants to do it. This is what I've got the revelation from all of this. To be ready to release to be ready to release the miraculous. How, how do we do it? Apostle Kirkpatrick said it's not just coming from him, it's coming from the body. So allow it to flow. Allow it to flow through you. Allow it to flow. Hallelujah. And with that being said, I, I, I get that nudge. Okay, it's time to cut it off now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for the word, for the revealing of the word, and we thank you that we receive it, and we thank you that we will allow you to do whatever you need to do in us to bring about the miraculous. We thank you, God. We partner with you, and we partner with Apostle Kirkpatrick and Lady Kim for this to be a place of the miraculous. It is the place of the miraculous, but for us to participate in the miraculous. We give you glory. We give you honor and praise for it right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Give God some praise. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, oh God. Thank you. Oh, bless your name, oh God. We thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. You know what? It's time for opportunity for prosperity time. Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. I'm coming from uh, 2 Corinthians 9 and 7. It says, let me slow down. 
Each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Something stood out to something stood out in that scripture to me. It says, every man, I got it right here, every man shall give what he has decided in his heart to give. Guess what I got from that? It's not a decision in your heart. We want, I would uh, encourage you to uh, ask God, what's my part? What's my part in this offering? What is my part in the giving? What is my part? And follow God's leading and be cheerful and in doing what God has instructed you to do. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the opportunity to, to, to give, to return to you our tithes and to sow into the, the kingdom. And we thank you, Father, because of that, all our needs are met and we're blessed going out and blessed coming in. We're blessed in the city. We're blessed in the field. We thank you for increase, increase, increase. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may come for those of you, you know, can follow instructions on how to give to those of you who are watching online and those of you in the house, you can come and lay your uh, place, your offering, your tithes and your gifts on the altar and give God some praise and thank him for it. Hallelujah. Glory, glory to your name, O oh God. We bless your name, O oh God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, O oh God. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Bless your name. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. We bless your name, O oh God. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I know that some of you have heard, most of you have all, probably already heard the uh, testimony of our daughter, daughter obeying God in the giving. And because of her obedience, she God did a supernatural, miraculous thing for her. A debt of $8,800 was forgiven. Not a credit, you not a credit being against her, forgiven because of our obedience. So obey God and believe that God is going to do the miraculous in your life. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Glory to your name, oh God. Again, you may stand because I'm going to go ahead and get us some additional a reminder. This Sunday we have uh, one combined service at 10 o'clock. Please uh, bring somebody with you. Hallelujah. You come and bring somebody with you that need a blessing, need a miracle from God. And we just, Apostle Kirk Patrick is going to uh, bring forth a powerful message. And we're going to have the praise and worship team is going to bring, sing some wonderful songs and the, the dance ministry and the children's ministry. We're just going to have a hall old word, hallelujah time. Hallelujah. You can come on and get it. You can come on and get it. We're going to have a hallelujah time in the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, O oh God. Bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. We're just going to give him just a few, few moments here. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word. And again, we thank you. We're not just hearers, but we'll be doers of the word as well. And we give you glory and praise. We thank you for your people. We release you from this place, but not from the presence of God. Go in peace and the power of God's might. Amen. Have a good evening.